It was 6 o'clock. I'm sorry I didn't have some music playing for you or anything. Normally that's, that's kind of my go-to. A little acoustic guitar up here, but uh, I always say it's me. It's definitely not me. I can't carry a tune in a bucket. So. Um, we are here tonight. This is actually our third uh, community forum. And tonight's community forum and the next community forum are going to be uh, very similar to each other. Um, so if you want to get the word out, uh, we do have sign-up sheets up here. If you would, uh, at some point, as you're leaving or something, if you will come up and sign up. And then we have our community communication series up there uh, as well. So if you want anything, if you haven't been getting the emails and you'd like to grab something, or if you'd like to give those out to somebody uh, just to give them some different information, uh, Tina has put those up there. Thank you, Tina, for that. Uh, and then uh, there's also some flyers up there about the future community forums. Uh, that will be happening so if you want to invite anybody to those uh, that would be great so i am pleased tonight to introduce patrick smith um, and patrick comes to us from insight design and um, honestly insight design has been with us since the very the very beginning of all of this um, they, we kind of tapped them way back in 2016 um, right when i came back to the district and we started to kind of look towards this project and, and see what we were going to do. And then in 2017, I believe, uh, they did a facility uh, plan for us and worked through that, uh, going into all the buildings, basically looking at uh, what needs we had in the buildings, where our overcrowded issues were, and different things like that. Um, so uh, a lot of the foundation work for uh, the new site and the new building was done through that facility plan uh, and the needs assessment that we saw through that. Um, they also were very instrumental in helping to guide us to get the $4.5 million SEMA grant uh, for the monolithic dome uh, that we have planned uh, for the new site. Um, we actually looked at that last year, um, a 9-10 grant uh, to put at our current high school. Um, the numbers kind of didn't work out as well because of the floodplain issues that are around the high school. We talked about that during those first community forums that uh, that floodplain issue, uh, you can't count anybody if they have to come across that. Um, so that caused a, a little bit of issues with our numbers uh, with that. Uh, we did not end up getting that grant. Um, in fact, nobody in the state of Missouri got that grant. So it wasn't like we were bumped and somebody else got it. Nobody got that grant. Uh, we then rewrote for uh, this year's grant. And once again, we have uh, a chance to turn an application for that. And hopefully receiving that money here um, very quickly um, as, as we start to break ground. And due to us getting that $4.5 million grant, remember with phase one, uh, with what we're doing, we are planning on having no taxes, uh, no tax increase uh, for this first phase. Um, so that, that also uh, is great news. And then um, just about tonight, you're not gonna see a full picture of the building. So if you came to see what the building is gonna look like, you're in the wrong place. Um, that, first of all, we have to figure out where we're gonna place it. Uh, Patrick's gonna talk to us a little bit about that and the discussion behind that and what went into that. Uh, he's also gonna talk about basically three different choices uh, that the board had to choose from about what they were going to do and why they chose the two that, that they chose um, and then narrowed it down and then kind of give you an idea of what the site looks like and then some conceptual drawings of where things might be placed um, with some contingencies uh, based on some things that I'm not gonna steal his thunder. I'll let him talk about that. Um, but once we're 100% sure of the location uh, and the new site, and then we have our construction manager at risk uh, team chosen, which that is actually going on right now um, at, at uh, the elementary over there in your central office. Uh, that is why Dr. Wheeler is not here. Once we have that kind of in place, then we can start getting into uh, what the building will look like, what the different phases will look like, and we can get that information back out to uh, you, the public, and, and let you know. But so honestly, right now the board's meeting. Once Patrick gets through his uh, presentation here tonight, uh, we'll have a question and answer time. Um, if we don't know the answer, we'll tell you if we don't know the answer. And I will punt it to Dr. Wheeler and let him get you the answer. Um, or we'll try to figure that answer out uh, to make sure that we get back with you and give you a good answer for that. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce Patrick Smith from Insight Design. Once again, 
he and Brian Foxworthy, uh, the president of Inside Design, they've been with us from the very beginning. So they have a great uh, knowledge and foundation of what we're getting ready to do here, and I'm pretty excited about that. So here's Patrick. Thank you. I appreciate you having me out here tonight. So I'm Patrick Smith. I am the office director for our Kansas City office with Inside Design Studio. We have three offices, one in St. Louis as well, and then on the Kansas side in Overland Park. About 90% of what we do is K-12 ed projects. So we, we heavily specialize in the education sector uh, on the architectural side. From this presentation, like Mr. Coran said, we've been working here for six years now, gone through a number of different studies, um, gone through the process of, of what these next couple phases, what, what the uh, infrastructure for Nabonostra School District needs, what that needs to look like. Um, this study was specifically done, uh, you know, we were, the Board of Education tasked us to, th there's a list of about six things, and you'll see that here in a second, that this is what we want to accomplish uh, in regards to the high school, um, whether that be at the current site or a potential new site as well. Uh, this whole process actually started and the three options were developed prior to actually being um, selected to move on towards the application process for that FEMA, the SEMA grant that was discussed. Um, the the $4.5 million SEMA grant, that's actually the federal portion of what will actually be paid. So these grants, he mentioned at one point a 90-10 grant that was previously submitted for. This is a 75-25 grant. Uh, so the 75% portion that would be uh, reimbursed by the, the government is, is the 4.5. The grant is actually about 5.8 million total. Um, but the, the reimbursable part is the 4.5 million. So you'll see, we'll start, I'll go through the three options. There's a lot of information on here, a lot of text on the slides too. I'm going to attempt to do my best to not just read to you as well. Show these pretty, the, these conceptual, they're uh, conceptual plans on the site that are very rudimentary in the shapes on purpose, just very general. Here's where things can go, adjacencies. Uh, where scope and different uh, items want to be next to each other. Uh, quote unquote, a bubble diagram is what we like to call it, but just using very uh, rudimentary shapes to help get that point across. Like I said, this is a many month design process once we uh, you know, work, work through all the processes to get towards the end of pretty pictures and what the facilities may look like um, through, the, through many phases as well. So, like I said, there's gonna be three options. The first option is that we looked at is what if what if we don't do anything on what if we do what if all the scope that we're trying to accomplish happens, there was the majority of it at the current high school site. Um, there are some challenges there. You're landlocked, uh, parking's a challenge, the floodplain's a challenge, um, seven lane track, bleachers that are kind of crumbling and, and need some structural uh, need a structural engineer to come out and look at it, if not just completely tear down and start fresh there. So we started to look at what we could do on this site. And you'll see the first thing is a little bit of a shift in the field. Um, and that's due to the creek that's right there, preventing us from getting an eight lane track. Um, I don't know if you all can see all this information, but here are those six items that we were tasked by the board. So a wrestling locker room, uh, three wrestling mat, wrestling room, weight room, eight lane track, and, and refurbished turf or a new turf field, um, the upgraded stadium bleachers or improved stadium bleachers, and then a multi-purpose um, practice, baseball, softball practice building as well. Now, you'll see that one's not checked because that will go at the, where the current baseball, softball complex is, and we'll show that here in a second. So, assuming we didn't put anything on a new plot of land or anything like that, how can we get all of this to fit on the current site? Um, like I said, we shifted the track to be able to create a new eight lane track to be able to host the district uh, track meet or something of that nature. Um, there's also a new large building that would house new concessions. That's where the wrestling locker rooms would be, the wrestling room, etc. cetera. A, uh, taking the current uh, weight and wrestling room and making it a full fledged uh, weight room solving any of the ADA accessibility paths as well up to the complex and then we would be demolishing the existing concrete bleachers that uh, have some structural issues with them and coming back with approximately it, the number of count on seats is about 2,000 that does not seem to be uh, 
the issue is the structural integrity of the bleachers themselves with a new concrete pad and new aluminum bleachers um, for this site. So, like I said, you can see here the, uh, the key points of what's happening on this phase, 2,000 bleacher seats, new track, as well as new turf and improving and fixing the drainage underneath the turf as well uh, as we go about that process. Now, there's some tricks as we shift that. There's, as we shift the track in the field, there's a curb that goes around the track that the turf ties into. All of that will kind of need to be ripped up and essentially started from scratch. The, to, to check that sixth box of the um, multi-purpose facility, we come over to the uh, current athletic facility over here with the softball and baseball, um, north of 50 Highway, and add that multi-purpose building right there to check that sixth box. Um, look at potentially some batting cages that would drop it down in there, indoor practice, that sort of thing. Um, again, these were the six things that were tasked uh, by the Board of Education to, to solve or try to work through on these three options. So the summary of option one, um, you know, we hit a lot of the high points. Here's the diff two different sites, um, picking up a lot of that information. So uh, pro is, you know, we, we keep, we stay at the traditional setting that you have at your high school. You know, there's the tradition that um, you're able to host the district track event track meets because you now have an eight lane track. You've upgraded um, everything on your athletic side. You've got your improved ADA accessibility and bleachers, and this would be the lowest upfront costs. A lot of what's being tackled right now though is on the athletic side. What the cons of this are, you know, we mentioned and you know, your high school currently is, is pretty landlocked. You're, you have parking issues, the floodplain issues. Um, a lot of the, um, other spaces in the high school, the band room is not a very big band room, don't have an auxiliary gymnasium. Um, there's a lot of these other uh, program elements that are, uh, would ideally be a little bit more adequately sized um, to a high school, the, the new age learning that a high school uh, goes through right now in the students. So while we would be able to provide these elements, we're gonna have issues down the road to master plan and future um, improvements to fine arts, um, science, those type of programs at the high school as well, just because of the limited space. The numbers, can everybody see all the information? Is, is the numbers easy enough to read? Maybe we can flip one of the lights off. There you go. Yeah, it's so, we're providing a range here on the information, but it's 5.75 million to seven and a half million. Now, as a part of this, you would be rejecting the grant as well, the senior grant coming in, so that 4.4, 4.5 million dollars is part of the federal share. Um, because it is not, like Mr. Crowan mentioned, it is at the other site. That we did have one previously written for here. We were not awarded that. Um, we actually, over these last five years, it started the original one. We had one written at this school, then we had it written at the high school, and we were finally selected at the new site. So option two and three are both on this site. They vary a little bit, and I'll get into that here in a second, but um, if the Board of Education and the school district were able to purchase this plot of land, how would we be able to fit a lot of this similar uh, scope onto this site? as well as potentially propose um, any future additions as well, any future phases. So a lot of the similar elements, um, I'm gonna zoom in, and we will hit both sides of this here in a second, but I will zoom in to give a little bit more detail on how we're fitting that out um, with more information. So new state, new track and field, new stadium um, that would have both home and visiting bleachers, about 500 seats on the visiting side. Again, about the same 2,000 number of seats on the home side. Um, you'd have the space for practice fields at this point. Um, you'd have the space to grow into as well for tennis courts and other things like that. You develop the athletics, um, you know, through phases on this site. Um, we're looking at a visiting locker room um, that would also house track and field potentially or cross country. We like to overlap a lot of, you know, during different seasons, try to uh, gain as much economies on the locker rooms as we can, as opposed to just completely dedicating. So we look at those fall sports and pairing them up with a spring sport with similar numbers um, and that kind of thing. And then also having the 
visitor concessions along with visiting football team um, as well. So this circle right here is the monolithic dome that was discussed. There would be a tornado safe room. Stand up to an EF5 tornado, which I believe is about 240, 250 mile an hour winds. Um, we've done a number of these throughout the state. And it would be a two story. You would enter on the upper level, ideally, is what the plan is right now. There would be a walking track on the top level, and then you would walk down the bleachers and the court, and all of the other locker rooms would be on the lower level, training room, that kind of thing. So the intent in this plan is that the football locker room would be in the lower level along with wrestling, basketball, volleyball, those kind of locker rooms as well, PE lockers. Um, and so the home football would access from here, visiting football there. Um, and then again, that multi-purpose building we'll get here in a second that was discussed with the baseball and softball locker rooms as well. Now, eventually too, we were looking at building a, we call it a connector piece, or um, this would be next to the shelter that would be that lobby for the gymnasium events that would then kind of be a springboard to a future high school where we'd be able to properly size band room, music, those kind of music rooms, those fine art spaces, um, auxiliary gymnasium, those type of elements that you don't currently have, performing arts center. Um, we would be looking to size that at, currently as high school is about 450 students. Um, we'd be looking at sizing it probably around 550 students to allow for growth. Ideally, you start around an 85% capacity. This is a good capacity at a high school level. Um, just to allow, there's times where bubble classes come up and allows you to flex into those spaces as need be. So we're showing just roughly that outline of about 110,000 square feet once you add it all in together plus that gymnasium. Um, just so we're trying to space plan right now just to make sure, yes, all of it would fit. And we wanna make sure Whatever we build now, we are doing so and don't uh, paint yourself into a corner going later into the future phases. We want to make sure we leave as many options on the table still because things change whenever those future you know, curriculum changes, different things like that are changing. Your numbers are changing that you want to be you want to be nimble and be able to make those decisions when they come up. There was also a site too of the the trip stadium could slide further north. Sorry, we do have north to the right here. Could slide further north to try to group a lot of those um, playing fields together, the track, the field, the baseball, the softball, that kind of thing together as well. I think that's still on the table. It'd be an option once once the CM's on board, they'll start doing more of the estimating and construction timelines. Um, we'll meet with AD, the AD, Mr. Coron, Dr. Wheeler, uh, with the, a lot of the staff as well. Um, who would be involved in these spaces. And that's how we typically like to design. We sit down, we've even sat down with the students before as well and let, kind of get their perspective on how they um, utilize the spaces as well and then take all that information together and try to put the best plan forward for, for non master school district. So again, uh, the multi-purpose building kind of rounds out this phase of getting those um, six elements in. Uh, what I didn't mention is the weight room and wrestling room would also be part of, of this construction right here, um, tied in with that connector piece and the uh, safe room tornado shelter. Now, when we do all of that, what that would allow us is also to have the ability at your current site, high school site, to come back and refurbish this. That would we wouldn't have to shift everything and basically start from scratch because we could maintain that as a seven lane track because you would also not have the eight lane track. Um, we could also then replace the turf. We would still probably want to tackle those bleachers because I think those are a structural issue, but we can go back with significantly less bleachers, about 500 seats. And this could potentially be a middle school uh, athletic facility to be utilized for the, those students as well. Again, that summary sheet, um, you know, the, the pros, you, you also are able to now host a district track event on all of these, really. Um, it allows soccer at the stadium if you so choose. I know that's not happening necessarily now. Um, it establishes a site for, for the future high school, potentially, that allows you to um, allows you to build in those adequate um, program elements for all of the other uh, 
um, portions of the school as well, not just the athletics portion. So um, you have quite ample room for adequate parking and accessibility as well. Um, you have now a tornado safe room that, and we would size that that safe room will be sized to accommodate the full high school when it would be built. Um, and, and then some, it would be all the students and the staff as well. So um, the cons on this is that it's a higher upfront cost. Um, it does temporarily separate the athletics and the academics as you start to move all the athletics out here. Uh, but you also do already have that happening with soccer, baseball, and softball as well. Um, now, another thing is there's the mode out site that kind of we're, we're U shaping around that site right now. Um, and so, now, I think there's adequate room on the south edge of the site to be able to build the program elements that are needed. And then, again, the, the total cost for the district portion knowing that there's the 4.4 million there from the federal government would be 10.3 million to 14.2 million. Option three, you'll notice instead of jogging around the moat outside was the, the district also asked us, the school board said, what if we were able to cure the moat outside? What would that look like? So we started looking into uh, that as well and being able to try to start to bring everything really closer together on the north end. Again, same, a lot of the same scope applies here, the wrestling room, the weight room, the locker rooms, they're all mostly associated with the storm shelter. We've kept the same shape again, not saying we would design the same high school, the, the site would dictate that to a little certain extent. Again, these are just general shapes to show approximate square footage and how big they would be on the site but it starts to group. Now you can start to utilize parking lot as it could be baseball, softball parking lot on game nights, football parking lot on game nights, on track and field events. When the performing arts center is potentially built, we look at maybe bringing that over here. You'd have more of a staff parking lot during the day that would then be a show. Um, you know, any, any theatrical event that would be in the performing arts center would be a parking lot for them, as well as then the bulk of the student lot during the day and staff would be able to hit from both directions as well. Um, same elements, soccer or practice fields, visiting bleachers, home bleachers, same numbers. Like I said, a lot of the same elements apply. They're just rearranged differently and brought closer to the north end, closer to the baseball athletic or baseball softball facility. And actually the the summary we would be doing the same thing at the current site, the same information. So the dollars and cents are very similar with the question mark of what would it cost to procure the moat outside. So when we looked at all three of these, um, this is a potential construction schedule. Um, when we started the, the process, like I said, there, we had not been selected to move on to the application process for the, the SEMA grant. Once we were in the middle of going through this process, we were allowed, we were asked to go to the next process on the SEMA grant. So we presented this to the Board of Education maybe a month, two months ago, two months ago. Um, the board decided to pursue options two and three. Um, so it's still, we're narrowing in on that process, but it is still very much in the, in the works. Like I said, the CMs, interviews are going on right now to select a CM. They'll help refine, this is a very general schedule. What you're seeing here, option two or three, since they're very similar. One of the, the cons that I didn't mention on option one is that that is not the, the new track and shifting all that, the new bleachers, new turf, would not be able to be done over just a summer or something. Um, so you would be out one season. You, it would not be a whole year, but you probably would need either wait until football season's done, do that, and you're missing a track season, um, or vice versa. So with this other one, you can build the, the track and field and the stadium at the new site, keep the current site active, and then once that's open, then go back and renovate the current site you have. And so you don't lose the season, you've always got one track and field and stadium operational at all times. 
and then the the purple the because of the tornado shelter being a federal grant there are kind of different some different hoops to go through we've done it a bunch of different times so we're well versed in that process but the stadium construction and the tornado shelter connector piece construction will run a little bit they will overlap but they they'll run a little bit differently and, and potentially stagger in some time frames that stadium is going to be front loaded and then the tornado shelter will be more back loaded so it is possible that the stadium could be open while the construction on the tornado shelter is still going on and then this is a little bit of a more in-depth information on what that tornado shelter could look like again kind of a dome competition gymnasium um, if you go to our website we've got five or six of these on our website that we've done um, web city missouri stover missouri archie missouri um, the, these are the uh, grant numbers like i said it's a 75 25 split so the total grant is 5.88 million um, with the anticipated cost of the shelter in general at seven to eight million this is a 160 foot diameter dome with locker rooms kind of on all four sides we're looking to end up probably put some of the locker room space in here as well um, there's going to be athletic storage pe storage referee room um, discussions of weight rooms as well on how that all fits in so this this will mold over time but it gets you a rough idea of what programs we can get in here as well um, a full length basketball court as well as full length cross basketball courts um, and then a training room as well. So this is the summary of all of the information that were on the previous slides and is the last slide as well. So with that, if there's any questions, um, Michael and I will try to answer as much as possible. I don't know if this is part of uh, the school, I mean, that there, but is there any thought of putting the bus bar in there? Because I mean, most of the buses don't fit inside the so if, you, if we go back all the way to the MoDOT side, there's a, a great building uh, that's actually um, right above kind of where the, there's a great building that's right there. There would probably be a, could possibly be a maintenance uh, shed. Um, and then there have been discussions about the bus barn as well. Um, so honestly, the layout of the acreage that we have right there, uh, even without MoDOT, lends us a lot of room to kind of use some different things. Uh, with MoDOT, truly, it just opens everything up for us. We actually, we've talked about the fact that eventually this could be a, a site for two different schools if needed. Um, so if something should happen to one of the schools or, or we have to shift something over, uh, there is all of that down there at the bottom. Uh, if we end up getting MoDOT, even without MoDOT, there's there's still some space there as well. So it really lends to a lot of openness for that. And again, I mean, it's not really part of the construction, but is there any thought as uh, what it's going to do to bus transportation? I mean, how many more buses we may need? Because most of the kids are in town. Right. Okay. Um, we we've, we've had discussions about it. Currently, if you mention the bus barn, currently that would stay where, where it is at. Um, obviously, as you said, this gets a little more a bit more kids that we have to pick up because it's more than a mile away. Um, as of right now, this is a high school. Most of our high schoolers, honestly, don't ride the bus, so it's not as big of an issue as, as you would think. So, so is the school attached to the dome? Is that what? Yes, yeah, so we have the monolithic dome, which would be the, the SEMA FEMA shelter, um, plus the competition gymnasium. Um, and then the, the conceptual drawing there, the building right next to it, uh, is the um, three mat um, wrestling room. And that would actually be two stories as well. So there's a little bit of space there for like Jay Razzi and um, robotics and different things like that to go in there. And then the arch is what we were talking about tonight. We're, we're not giving you exactly what the building looks like. It, it may look nothing like that, but it's just a conceptual drawing to show you that that's something that is just a placeholder for it. So it would all be tied together uh, towards the end. Yes, it, it would all be connected at the end of the day. 
Um, we're, we're, think, we're trying to think through too, above the wrestling room, sizing it to make sure it could potentially be a cafeteria down the road. Maybe it's not the cafeteria. Again, we're trying to be as nimble as possible now and not paint you into a corner that we don't want to shortchange the size of this. So we're looking at, okay, if this was a 550 student high school, your cafeteria wants to be about X square feet, make sure we have the ability to be able to do that there. Ideally, you would have on a full build out, your athletics on one end, your fine arts kind of on the other end, with your bulk of your general classrooms more in the middle. And that's typically what we would start to see right here as we fill that out. Um, but yeah, that, that's the intent is that this would be the springboard of what the future high school would connect to. So basically, what's kind of shadowed there, we're showing us kind of phase two as you're looking. My question should probably be directed towards the school board, but in your presentation, you've made it extremely clear to me that the structural deficiencies at the present uh, bleacher area, and if there are truly structural deficiencies there, why in the world are we still using them? Well, why, we is it, why is that not a priority to fix, correct the structural deficiencies that you've made it very clear in your presentation, which you've talked about four times, the structural deficiencies. Uh, why is that not a, why is that not a top priority? Whether you use that for a middle school track or whether you use an eight lane track or seven lane track or 27 lane track, why is that an issue? Right, and uh, so it is an issue and that's why we're doing this. Um, it's, it's why it's one of the number one things that's up there. It's, it's one of the six uh, areas that we have so defined again, as. If there's structural deficiencies there, why are we still utilizing those facilities if they're structurally deficient? So you're talking like it's going to slide off the hill tomorrow. Well, I didn't say it was doing anything. The, the gentleman that presentation said four or five times that it's structurally deficient. Yeah, it, it it's definitely been analyzed, has. It's been evaluated. And it's structurally deficient. Yeah. It definitely has cracks. It definitely has issues. Um, it's something that we have spoken about for years. It is a reason why we are pressing forward with what we are doing right now. It's a reason why that was one of our top priorities. It's a reason why it made one of our top six. It's a reason why we're having this presentation right now. So it, it is something that we have discussed. Structurally, it, is it going to be okay? Yes, it's still going to be there for that next season. We have mitigated a few issues that are there with some stairs and different things like that to ensure safety for uh, patrons that will go there. Uh, but we do foresee, we do see some cracking and different things like that that we, we have been addressing. Um, if you guys don't know Rich Lang, he is out there all the time, does a phenomenal job. Um, he truly thinks safety all the time uh, and has been in discussions with us. He's been in discussions with Patrick and Brian as well. Um, so. Yes, it has been accomplished. That's what I clarify. So you deemed it structurally deficient and you have changed the structural deficiency so it's 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 good to go for now? Tell nobody has come out and deemed that as structurally deficient. Oh. We are we are saying that there are issues with that particular area. There are issues with that bleacher area. We have not had a company come out and tell us that structurally this is this is deficient and you cannot have people on there. That has not happened. Okay. We see issues with that bleachers, as many of you I'm sure that have gone to football games have seen issues with those bleachers. So we are trying to address those now and that's why it hit our top six. That's a poor word choice by myself. Okay, thank you. School districts have been around um, new new school districts, old old buildings, new buildings. Uh, the drop off, and, and especially in a high school where you have student yes. drivers, and you would have some being dropped off by parents. We have the buses coming in. The the flow. I'm sure we, we're looking at different options here. So I'm sure that that's a consideration. When does that when does that solidify, and what is that? What is that looking like at this point for these different options? To, sure. To, so, and also, but being on a on a highway, 
Correct. Our civil engineer that we've selected for this job, so we don't, our firm does not have engineers in-house, so we work with a number of different engineering companies, and we do that purposely to kind of pick and choose per job because they have different specialties. The civil engineer we chose on this job is also a, a traffic engineer, um, and is dedicated to that. So we've utilized him on multiple other high school facilities that we've used because you do, you have your bus, your student tri drivers and your parent drop-offs, all three of those, and none of them want to cross and mingle. And you want to make sure all the student drivers are safe with left turns crossing against traffic coming, you know, anybody coming northbound and different things like that. So right turn only lanes and different things like that. So it is always a priority and always thought through. That's specifically why we chose the, the civil engineer we did for this project um, to make sure that we had all that, those synergies of the three elements, bus, parent, and student drivers, always in the forefront of the mind of this design. And I know that was your question from last time as well, kind of about the safety with that, that highway frontage there. Also, if you look at the site too, um, as you come in off of the highway, right now students are, are traveling on that highway going out to the baseball softball facilities and different things like that. Even with the site where it's at currently on, on this slide, we have a road that will take the students there to keep them off of that. So it mitigates some of that transportation that, that is going on up there as well. Uh, keeps them off of the highway. Um, so hopefully, hopefully we'll mitigate some of those issues. And then with the MoDOT site, um, off of there you can kind of see some of that as well you can see uh, the roundabout up at the front for pickup and drop off for buses uh, picking up students and then a little bit different look uh, utilizing a culvert that is already there um, right by the baseball softball facility to be able to give us a couple different uh, options for parking and still keep students off uh, as they go to football games baseball and different things like that so it's, it's a great question and we, like I said the last time, we've all sat at that stoplight looking to turn left um, on 23, and you can't because you've got McDonald's and Dollar General traffic, you've got base traffic, and there, there seems like there's always somebody in that turning lane turning on to 50, and you can't get across there. So you just punch at Margaret and hope for the best. <laughs> Any other questions? These are, these are great questions, guys. We, we truly appreciate it and uh, appreciate your your time with us as well. So we hope, hope that we can kind of answer anything you have. All right. Well, uh, our next community forum, and I don't have that in my brain here, will be uh, March 22nd. Uh, so Tuesday, March 22nd, I don't think we have a snow makeup day. We're hoping that we don't have snow in March. Um, it's nice to have 50s and, and sunshine outside right now, so uh, today. Um, so like I said, that community forum will be the same thing. Patrick will be back uh, with us. Uh, we might be able to sneak Brian in here as well, uh, the president of Insight, and see if we can't get him in front of you guys as well. But. Um, those, the two presentations will be very similar uh, to what they were tonight uh, for that night. Uh, Dr. Wheeler will probably introduce Patrick. He's much more eloquent with that. So uh, if you really want to come for the introduction, you're welcome to do that too. But, uh, if you don't have any more questions or if, if you need to come up and ask us some afterwards, uh, we're going to stick around and, and answer any questions that you have. But I saw I did see him. Yeah, I just have one more. Just because I drive by it all the time, it seems like you've already decided because, I mean, you've already torn down the house over there, across from Dollar General. So we purchased, um, we did purchase that house under foreclosure uh, by Dollar General. Uh, with both of the, the plans, that house is not an issue. What we didn't want was, we didn't want what was happening with MoDOT to be that house as well. We didn't want a rental or something that, like a bad tooth kind of stuck in the middle of that. So. Um, that is what, when that house came open, that's why we went after that house. Um, because we were still looking at the remainder of this area, um, and we just wanted to make sure that that wasn't stuck there as well. I have one more also. At what point will you need to increase the tax levy? At what phase? Or, or will there be any need? Or will there be, is there any discussion of that? Yes, yeah, so once again, phase one, um, as I mentioned, there will be no, no taxes on that. No more taxes, right? No new taxes. Um, 
we're, we're planning on sticking to that and, and not uh, saying it and then going back on it uh, like we've seen in the past. Um, but that phase two where you kind of see that shadowed area, once we start building the school, there will need to be conversations uh, coming to uh, the stakeholders and making sure that we talk to them about that. It's not just for that phase two. Remember though, um, if you come to our school board meetings, our impact aid is also tied to the amount of levy that we have. So we have to continue to bring that up. Uh, we have to be in the 80th percentile on that as well. So there's a little bit of issue with that. Impact aid is a great program for us. Uh, truly is an amazing program, brings us a lot of money. We do not want to lose that uh, in the long run. So some of that will be to ensure that our levy is high enough to hold on to our impact aid. Uh, and then some of that will be to ensure that we're able to uh, build that second. So second phase? Phase two. Okay. Anything else? What's the time frame for like phase two? What do you think for that next step? That, that honestly, bud, I, I don't know uh, the time frame for, for phase two. Um, phase one is gonna come here pretty quick. So with our application in once, once SEMA basically says we need to break ground, we need to break ground. We can't, um, we can't kind of push them down because we would then lose, uh, have a possibility of losing that grant, uh, and we don't want to lose that grant. Um, so that's kind of why you see that slide, which um, I think we'll put this up on the website for you guys to be able to see too. So you can kind of see that when we'll, when we'll break ground and different things like that. And I can turn over to Patrick because he knows this slide better than I Sure, and really the the summary of it is 2024. About January 2024 is ideally what we're looking at. Um, everything, the stadium, the safe room, everything will be constructed and open. Uh, you know, obviously, plus or minus a few months, give us some leeway on that. Right now, we're we're in February of 2022, but uh, that's how it, it all kind of tracks out right now. The people that are in the uh, elementary cafeteria right now will have a big say in that as well because they'll be the construction manager uh, working through all that timeline but so the SEMA process we would be breaking ground potentially probably I would say January of 23 so maybe in about a year from now that safe room would be able to start breaking ground the stadium would more or less probably we're looking to hopefully break ground about this summer on the stadium um, maybe late summer or somewhere in there. Um, there's some things we can do to get creative with a construction manager where we do different bid packages. So while we're still working on the design, the earthwork is starting to go so we can get out in front of the construction and overlap some of those elements. Um, but the due to the, the federal grant and some of the processes that work through, um, which we're happy to do to get $4.4 million, um, we'll probably put us at about December, January, where we would potentially be able to break ground safer somewhere there so that january 2024 goal on the timeline that would be for phase one completion phase one completion okay. correct no, yep yep everything the not this dash part okay yeah there, there's a lot of determining factors on the dash part school board and dr we were probably are the most determining factors in that either none of them are here tonight um but that that's years away probably so for that January of 24, we're looking at these elements right here. So you said a possible break ground on the on the, the structural on tw January 23, right? So obviously MoDOT depends on where that's going to end up being placed. Do we have any idea? Because that's only a year, so do we obviously we have a year to figure out where right. we're going to get that done? Yeah, he'll pass that off to me. Uh, so we are we are in negotiations with them currently. Um, we have a lot of support coming from the state and some representatives uh, that are looking at that. Um, obviously, Johnson County is one of very few counties in the state that actually have two of them. We have one here in Knob and then one in, in Warrensburg. So what the state is trying to do is actually combine those. Um, it just depends on if they're able to find their site. They have a site that is purchased. It's just working through the logistics of the federal government and drainage and 
I mean, water's the U.S. I mean, all kinds of different things that come into play with that. So, um, but we are in negotiations with them currently. It had a lot of fast traction at the beginning, and then just like most things, it really kind of bogged down and slowed down. So, um, we're hoping it's going to ramp back up again. Uh, the legislature is coming back to Jeff City, and hopefully, we're able to secure that through the and, and we won't being able to build on another site like this. Everything status quo with the current high school, right? So we can slow this down, <coughs> speed it up as necessary to work through some of that. We don't have to break start breaking ground this summer. We can wait and start all the construction at the same time. If, if we think that the better opportunity lies with Bodon, that's going to take a little bit more time. So being over here allows us to navigate that timeline easier. All right, like I said, if you didn't sign in, please do sign in. Uh, if you want to receive the emails from uh, Tina Brandt, uh, if you give her your email address, she will make sure that you get those and get some information sent out to you as well. I truly appreciate you guys coming. Uh, Patrick and I are going to hang out here up front just a little bit. If you have any other questions that uh, you didn't feel like you could ask in front of the group, please come forward and we'll try to answer those as best we can. Thank you guys. Have a blessed night.